Welcome to the U.S. Open Straight Pool Championships for 2019, presented by Q Sports International, being held at Griff's Billiards in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is George Tehachia, joined in the booth by Mr. Ben Sutherland. Hello, Anyways. everybody. Good morning, good afternoon. We've got one heck of a match here in the second day of the U.S. Open Straight Pool. We've got Shane Van Boney and Billy Thorpe. These guys, it seems, looks like they were traveling together, walking the pool hall together. But this is the fifth day they've been here at Griff's, and this is the third time they've played each other. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so three out of the five days they get to play each other. Quite a statement so far uh, at yeah. these events. Uh, we're playing straight pool, race to 125. What can you tell us about the players, Benny Brakes? Oh, man. Do you know anything about them? I might know a little bit about the two of them. Okay. Uh, we saw Shane got first place in our U.S. Open banks. Billy Thorpe got second. Billy took the hot seat. Shane came through the backside, took care of business, ended up winning the last match. Billy, yeah. Billy obviously lately has a bit of a big background uh, in banking. He's certainly known Does as... Does he work for Wells Fargo or... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he... I don't think he works aside from pool. Okay. I <laughs> and I wouldn't either if I didn't need to. Oh, there's an interesting little shot for a safety. Hello, 11 ball. But anyway, uh, yeah, Billy sent Shane to the one loss side out of a, after a hill-hill match. And then Shane came, worked his way back to the finals and uh, went hill-hill and took care of business in the bank pool. So let's see if he can make it two tournaments in a row out of the three that are available this these, this nine-day period. That's two, uh, that's two bank U.S. Opens in a row for him, too, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yep, sure wow. is. Uh, this U.S. Open is sponsored by J.B. Cases, Predator, Simonis, Discount Custom Apparel, Cyclop. In fact, they are using the Cyclop Hyperion Balls and Kamui. Hey, big thank you to those sponsors. Mm-hmm guys go out there those of you listening thank you very much for tuning in we appreciate you guys being there i'm glad to know that someone is listening to us <laughs> you probably have us on mute so you can't hear me uh, but uh, we're off and running and playing straight pool and shane's at the table we've had a couple of pretty darn good matches so far mm -hmm. for yesterday we had four matches yet was it four or five we had 12 two Four, four and six. And six. So we have four matches for you. And other matches going on right now that just started, I believe, is David Zepp and John Mora. Corey Duell versus Ian Costello. And I don't think Ian is in the room yet, unfortunately. Yeah, we haven't seen him. And Corey is at the table by his lonesome. Yeah, he's all alone. He just flew in from... Uh, is it Buffalo or what? Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah, and Alex uh, is here as well. He had a second place finish in the, well, the first and second place finishers of the One Pocket uh, Tournament are here. I uh, wish we'd get the rest of the guys here for uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That would be pretty awesome. So what can we say about Street Pool with Shane just pocketing balls? These two are some of the best ball pocketers in the world. Uh, as far as their straight pool expertise. You know, with these two, uh, they're at a pool table. They don't care what game they're playing. Mm -hmm. They're at a pool table. But straight pool, you know, is a, it's its own animal. Yeah. It's a, just its own little animal. Uh, the pattern play, uh, the last four balls, five balls on the table means so much so that you can prepare for the next rack and continued runs. Control. Well, both of these guys control the table uh, almost to a fault. So this will be an interesting match. We won't have much to say for you guys. Um, watching them play will be all the instruction and the education that we can provide. Yeah. Uh, uh, Shane won his first match, 125 to 180 over Mark Vidal Clarmoon. And Billy Thorpe won his first match, 125 to 94, over Max Eller Everly. And Max is a renowned straight pool player. Yes, he is. That was a good match. We did the commentary on that together. Mm -hmm. Other other matches that, that have come on has Warren Kiamko, 125 over 66, over Ian Costello. 
And then John Mora had a great match with Gabe Owen, which Gabe Owen came out on top, 125 to 85. So we've had some good matches, and we've had some matches that were... Um, um, I heard that last one was a bit of a lengthy match. Yeah, it did take I was three, not in the building. three hours. I was not here for that one. I believe that was you and Mitchell. Uh-huh. Ian Costello defeated Jerry uh, McWhorter, 125 to 85. And then Gabe Owen defeated Bob Jewett, 125 to 50. So uh, we have a couple of Californians that like to, that are pool enthusiasts and enjoy playing pool. And one's a cue maker, one's a writer. Very interesting. So yeah, Bob Jewett is a, writes for uh, a couple of the publications. And of course, uh, Mr. McWhorter is a cue maker in his own right. Makes some beautiful cues. He does, he does. But meanwhile, uh, Billy Thorpe is actually playing with our, uh, our sponsor's cue, Predator. And Shane Van Boning is off and running for his first rack. So Billy with a Did bit of a too far? bit of a funky safety. Oh, oh, I guess we could say a failed safety attempt on his first inning at the table. Shane clears up for a 14-0 lead after rack number one. Shane will try to continue his run. I believe he did overshoot his position a little bit. He would have liked more angle, so he can drive that cue ball into the stack a little firmer, I think. He can get enough of that uh, bottom ball, the uh, looks like the 11 ball, and he'll probably come down with the 11 to the bottom rail. Yeah, he's going to go all around. See, a lot of straight pool players, once they get, uh, this is about as far as they want to be from the ball, from their object ball. Yeah. They like being real close, and I'm not sure if I just was talking to Mitch about this yesterday. Uh, Mitch Ellerman was in the booth with me and we were discussing um, why it is that if we're playing rotation, these balls, these shots are simple, 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 easy. You know, you, you call them hangers. But then you get to playing straight pool and you get to shooting nothing but shots like he has here uh, or this distance away, half a table, everything within half a table, everything within half a table. All of a sudden that long shot becomes harder. Becomes much harder. Yeah. Not just harder, much harder. And uh, for th at this level, I don't think so. But at the uh, little level beneath these guys, those long shots uh, get tougher. So is it maybe your eyes get used to uh, the short shots and your perception is off? Yeah, it's got to be a mental uh, thing. Oh, it's just a mental thing. It's got to be something mental. If they're not tough in one discipline, but they are tough in another, yeah. it tells me that it's something in the player's head. Mm -hmm. But it seems to be in all of our heads, or most of us, yeah. I know what you're saying. Just a point that I uh, came across yesterday and I thought I'd make. Doesn't mean uh, there's any relevance to it. Just a little bit of conversation to keep you guys awake out there and gives me something to say in the booth. <laughs> I think Shane got just a little bit straighter on this five than he wanted. Yeah, he's okay though. Be well, he's not okay. Yes, he is. He just brings us back. Oh, he's, he's going, he's the going to the 11. Around. He's going for the 11. He's going to come all the way around and try to get a, a shot on the five so he can come into the stack. Wow, I wonder right if he's trying pocket. to go into the right stack. Right in the pocket. I thought that's where that three railer will go to. Well, he got one rack out of that and then uh, maybe a ball or two. He spotted two balls. I believe he was just supposed to spot one. I don't understand why he spotted two balls. I think balls. he's spotting the ball he pocketed plus one for scratching. No, you don't spot when it comes off the score. Oh, okay. Yeah, somebody better correct that. Yeah, there's uh, th we've been having a little bit. A lot of these guys don't play straight ball, so they don't know the entire rules. Um, he made a ball in scratch, which means he feels he owes one, so he spots it. He doesn't. He makes the ball that was uh, made by accident, or the ball that he made, and he spots the ball. He doesn't. Sp he spots that ball, and he pays his penalty off the score. Yeah, you're right. Let me just make sure. 
So in straight pool, uh, the penalty comes off your credit card. Um, the cash money is only uh, what you dropped out of your pants. So that leaves Shane with two so far. In addition to his 14, correct? Correct, yeah. Total. Billy's playing safe. Did he get there with it? Of course he did. Now see, Shane might have something here. He might play this uh, 14 ball off the four. doesn't he says I'll just return safety hmm. can't tell can't tell just how much of the 14 you yeah. can see but he also could play it off the four he's got all of the 14 for this he's got a little more than mm -hmm. Shane had I don't oh uh, can't tell very close see if you can yeah, it's tough to see if he can probably play the same shot. Uh, oh, it looks like he's doing something else here. If he's got a shot on the 14, he might just go ahead and cross make it. Didn't he just win? Uh, didn't he just win the bank pool championship? Yeah, he might know a thing or two about banking <laughs> the ball. <laughs> Says, go ahead and leave me that. To me, that is a hanger. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, he might try to play this four ball and get position in the five so he can break the stack, so he can attack the stack. Um, let's see just wh what he decides to do. He's trying to figure out a way to attack the, attack the stack. He wants to break those open to continue his run. So he will play the four ball. Oh, he caught a piece of it. Uh, I was going to say scratch number two. Now, what's interesting here, uh, and there wouldn't be three consecutive fouls. Never mind. I was going to say, what's interesting, he could be on two if he scratched, but he's already pocketed a ball, so it's not three cons two consecutive. It won't be on. It won't be consecutive. I wonder how often that actually comes up in this game. Uh, it came up yesterday. Did it? Yeah, they, they they came to where they both had two scratches, and the third the third scratch would have been a uh, fifteen point uh, 15 penalty. ball penalty, and if it happens a fourth time, uh, it's a re rack. Oh no, it's a fifteen point penalty and a re rack. Excuse me. I just remember the 15-point penalty. You know, if you scratch the first time, it costs you a ball. If you scratch the second time, it costs you a ball. If you scratch the third time, it costs you that ball plus 15 balls. And then uh, Mr. John Lehman said that you also re-rack the balls. At four. At four racks? At, at four racks. I thought he said four. I think you're right. I think I heard that, too. Yeah, I went over and asked him what would happen if, if you know, you take pay the 15 balls and then... Uh, and that, and then you scratch again. So I think from here, Shane's looking to leave the three ball. I'm sure there's a, a one pocket purist out there. I mean, a straight pool purist out there that might uh, uh, feel maybe I said it wrong. Shane's at it, making balls again. Billy has none to his credit. Zero to his credit. He's leaving the three ball for a, for a break shot. You know, it doesn't make any difference to Shane. His mechanics are so pure that he just pockets balls, regardless of the game, uh, any way he wants. He just, this is what I have to do. This is how I do it. Mm -hmm. It's real plain and simple. His mechanics, his pre-shot routine, uh, all of it's just, he wants to get a little more, little more, little. He, uh, he, I think he got enough. He moves the ball so well that he got enough to open these up again. And so so is that 27 with the penalty? Yeah, he had a scratch, so he'd be at 27. Two racks, he's got 22 racks. Shane coming out strong early on. Billy with a, we've seen two two uh, poor safeties out of Billy, yeah. which have resulted in essentially table runs for Mr. SVB. That's right, he started out with a safety, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, after the Look at 
this. Just enough to get on this ball. He'll move his cue ball around to get position on whichever ball he feels he can open up the stack with. He might open it up right here. Yeah, he could check it up with inside, kind of blast into it, which he did. Opened up the 12 nicely, opened up a few things nicely. Yeah. But yeah. He's left with great position from his 12 ball. For those of you that weren't with us yesterday in the, uh, yesterday's matches at the U.S. Open Vancouver Tournament here, uh, up in Monterey, California, a gentleman by the name of John Smith smashed, smashed Willie Moscone's record. A hundred points. By a hundred points, 626. It's very, very impressive. 44 plus racks. That's incredible. He's been on a mission. Guess what? Mission accomplished. I think it was 44 racks and 10 balls, or he missed yeah, the 10th like ball, that. something like that. That is super awesome. I know he was trying for that for a while, too. Yeah. In, in, in multiple states, he's been trying it. <laughs> he was in Arizona at Bull Shooters for yes, a couple of weeks. Yeah. And you know, when, he, when, he, when he's done that, he's gone to these pool rooms and set up shop uh, to do it. He set up a table for him to, you know, uh, to the specifications that they're trying to use, and um, or they were trying to use. And it draws people in. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 dried, it, it was, you know, there's people there wanting to watch this one. There's people there cheering him on. There's people there to watch him play straight pool. Uh, That's awesome. He's such a nice guy, too. Yeah, he's a good guy. John's a good guy. They live stream it. It was being live streamed out of bull shooters mm -hmm. uh, on, on Facebook, I believe. So. He's they said it's due, uh, he was getting his due attention, and uh, they said his uh, his 626 run was filmed. It wasn't streamed live on correct. Facebook or anything like that. But yeah, they filmed it. I've heard that it's been filmed, so maybe at some point we will have access to that mm -hmm. footage. Just I'm just curious how, how long it took him. Over four hours. Yeah, I heard it was over four hours. And uh, Mitch kind of put the math to it real quick, and he says, uh, that's almost like 20 seconds per shot. Wow. So he explained speed pool. I don't know if, uh, I, I don't know for sure. I was looking on uh, social media if they had the time down. I did not see it. Uh, I saw a couple of uh, Facebook posts where, you know, it, it was displayed pretty prominently, and it looked nice, and he was get, getting his uh, credit, uh, but I didn't recall seeing the time. Great bank shot there from SVB. He's all set up. He's going to have to develop a break shot. He doesn't have one currently. So he may want to do something with uh, moving into that four ball, 14 ball, and the five and the eight. Can we bump in that 15 over here? I wonder, wonder where he that lands. too hard. He bumped it enough. It uh, might not. He's looking at it. So is he going to do more with it? He might play shape. Uh, with he might play the six ball, bring it back a little bit, and kind of try to bump the 15 just a hair more, and then play the four, and then continue his run from mm -hmm. there. That wouldn't be a bad idea. He's not doing it, so never mind. But he pockets balls so, so well. And a lot of it is due to, well, first his skills, number one. But I've been watching him now for the past five days kind of carefully and his pre-shot routine is his feet are together and then he steps into the shot doesn't matter what the shot is so if you learn anything by watching Shane play learn that the pre-shot routine is key watch his feet hello and step mm -hmm. That was a good example of it, actually. That was <laughs> worked out in my favor. Thank you, Shane. <laughs> but right there, his feet are together. And now the step. And right in line. Yep, he always leads with that left foot. Mm -hmm. So Shane opting for the break shot off the foot rail. And we've uh, yet to see anything on a Billy yet. Uh, is that a 28 ball run form so far? Um, no. I'm trying to keep track of the runs here. 
It is. Yeah, he hit the 14, and then they went back and forth with a couple of balls. He got the ball and ran out. Yeah, he got the last 13, or the last 12 okay. in rack two. So he got the first two balls? Oh, because of the scratch. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So he had 12, that's 20, so 26 ball runs so far. Powerful shot there. Bro broke open the rack pretty oh. well. I don't know why I want to keep track of the runs, but just for the viewers, I guess, I'll let them know just where they're at since in straight pool. You know, high runs are mentionable. You uh, recall the high run we saw yesterday on the stream? The highest I saw was 68, I believe. guys can probably hear Alex in the background chit-chatting with Corey. Yeah, Alex is here, and when Alex is in the room, you're going to hear him. They made it. Uh, we were kidding about when he walked in uh, about him doing commentary. <laughs> and he says, I, he says, I can't do commentary. I'll cuss too much. I said, well, then we'd have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> He's such uh, a good guy. Fun character. Yes, he is. We already mentioned that he just uh, took first place, and Corey Duell took second in the big one-pocket tournament in Louisiana. And they made it over for the for the straight pool. I saw there was about 170k involved in that yeah, event. Yeah, those Calcutta's that they have in Louisiana are just huge, absolutely huge. Yeah, Alex went for 10 in that Calcutta. Yeah, somebody got their money back, didn't they? They sure did. Yeah, he was the the blind bid, yeah. pick of the litter. Yeah. Corey lost his uh, first match and fought his way back to the finals. Lost his first man to a gentleman out of Phoenix, Arizona. Who, who lost their first match? Uh, Corey Duell. Oh, in this event? No, no, he lost his first, well, he lost his first match to a forfeit. Yeah. Because he wasn't here for it yesterday. He flew in, um, this morning, I think, or late last night. Who was his first match over there? I don't recall. Some guy from Phoenix that uh, has a nickname about leaving you on the rail all the time, and they call him Freezer or something. You know that guy? Oh, I don't know. I think I might have heard a thing or two. Scott Scotty Frost. Boy? Yeah, Scott Frost. He's a left-hander. I don't know. Ah, the lefty from, yeah. from Tempe. The, left the, the lefty with the pump stroke. <laughs> We're kidding around because we we, we both uh, have been to freezers and we both have uh, no Scott. I've played with Scott now for quite a few years yeah, in the Desert Classic Tour since about 2008, uh, seven or eight when they started the Desert Classic Tour. It's about the time he hit Tucson. He hit Tucson. I mean, hit Phoenix in about 05 or 04 something like that. Yeah, I was gonna say it's been about 15 yeah. years in the Phoenix Valley. Oh, wow. Hopefully Shane's That's the closest I've seen him come to missing a ball. Hopefully Shane's got his, uh, his hearing to the aids turned back. down. Is it Alex talking all the time? No, it's Shane, uh, Corey's over here just saying Shane's name left and right, and it's kind of loud. If I was at the table, I could probably hear it. Well, you have rabbit ears, man. Yeah. I, you're known for that. <laughs> <laughs> Shane can probably tune out anything he wants to. I, I can hear quite a bit, but usually if I'm if I'm in the match, I try to listen to the music. I actually don't mind headphones. Ironically I enough, I don't play it was, with them, it was just don't off don't camera, and he he reached up to his ear and did something. I don't know if he was turning something off or turning something down. It's pretty good. Well, he probably, that. He, pr he probably turned it down because he knew he was going to break the balls up like that and didn't want to hurt his ears. <laughs> Wide open. Yes, it is. You know, when you break the balls wide open like that. So it's at a 40 ball run? Yes, sir. He's only got 586 balls to go. <laughs> you know, if he runs off from here, maybe we'll just let him keep trying. I wonder how everybody would like that. If, uh, you know, if he, if he, if he ran out to, to 125, 
from there, that would be as he has. So it'd be a 123 ball run. No, it would be a 98 ball run. If they want him to keep going, if they want to watch to keep going, or rather watch the next match. Well, if it took if it took Schmitty four plus hours, I don't think they. Want I don't think they want to tie up the TV that. table for that no, long. But don't. the viewers might. You know, the viewers well, at home might it. be okay with it. Yeah, it's funny. It's uh, it kind of kind of sad we don't have interactive. Uh, we can't see the chat uh, to sit there and see the comments from that. We came to see other players play, not just Shane. This is yeah. not the Shane show. <laughs> uh, or, you know, they like the fact that uh, that would be taking place. You'd have a, a mixed bag. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of mixed bags, it's going to get hot in Vegas, folks. I've been saying this all throughout every match. Uh, we are kind of CSI is proud of the schedule they have for this summer. It's pretty awesome. Uh, in July, it's just going to be pool heaven. If you like pool, if you love pool, Vegas is the place to you place to be. It's the 17th through the 27th. You're going to have the BCA Pool League World Championships and the USA Pool League National Championships, uh, 17th through the 27th. And during that time, you'll have all the pros run. This would be mostly amateurs for that. But during that time, you have all the pros running around with the Diamond Las Vegas nine ball open, $25,000 added. It's only a $275 entry fee. So if you want to compete with the pros, that is the perfect opportunity. Sign up now because it's a 128 player limit. And then Ben wants to tell you about the Predator event coming up. There's, that's a pretty good event too, I believe. The World 10 ball championships. That'll be in the Predator arena as well at the Rio. $100,000 added to that event. That's limited to 64 players by invite only. Mm -hmm. um, top 32 get paid, yes. which is pretty cool. If you win one match, you're in the money. And the big thing about that one is that's a world, which mm -hmm. means international players. You're going to have, well, you just saw them recently at the nine ball open here in Vegas. Uh, you had an international field. The likes has pretty much not been seen before. Yeah, that was incredible. You get to see it again. Get to see it again. Shane runs another one. That's the 22nd through the uh, 26th. He's up to a 54 ball run so far. And uh, then in August, the 8th through the 10th is the U.S. Open 10 ball championships, which Shane has won three years in a row. Wow. The last three years in a row. And then the 11th through the 13th is the U.S. Open 8 ball championship, which Shane won three out of the last four years. I wonder how many events Shane has won with, with the words U.S. Open tied to them, whether it be the CSI U.S. Opens or the International U.S. Open, or you see where I'm going with this. but I see where you're going with it, I but know. I can tell you one thing that I looked up. Is on 2018, he won the U.S. Open Bank Pool, U.S. Open 10 Ball, U.S. Open 8 Ball, U.S. Open One Pocket. I just missed straight. It was all the one I didn't oh see. Oh, my gosh. So he won four in one yeah, year. He won four in one year. And he's got five U.S. Open nine ball titles. Okay. So um, he's got three U.S. Open ten balls at least in total, but we were yeah. counting one right there. Um, two U.S. Open eight balls. Could you imagine having so much stuff on your resume you can't remember it all? Well, when you can't remember your resume, just look at the checkbook. Look at his checkbook. <laughs> uh, going back to 2007. Did you see that shot? Paper. No. I was looking at my paper. What did I miss? Wow. Gosh, I hate it when I miss good stuff like that. The cue ball's about where the nine is. Object ball on the rail. He played a combo into that object ball and pocketed both. It wow. was almost unnecessary, I would thought, at, at first glance, but he's a, that shot was brilliant. <laughs> that was incredible. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's that okay. was just. No, I, I wish I would have seen it. I was looking at the darn paper reading it, and I missed that. Uh, but going back to 2007, He's made basically over $100,000 every year. 2010, he made 96000 in just tournament earnings. This doesn't count any sponsorship money. It doesn't count anything, you know, uh, other matters. Tournament earnings. Wow. One year he made, uh, da, 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 the highest he has, I think, is 190 190 and 187 2016 was 187 uh, 2011 was 190 
I mean, this is why you're ma you're watching a. Uh, well, I don't even know what to call Shane. Prodigy. Pro prodigy. <laughs> well, he was. He's a master. <laughs> Absolute master, Grasapa. Yeah, he's incredible. I mean, Efren, uh, to me, Efren Reyes may well be the greatest player ever. That's just to me. But I'm telling you, this guy is 33 years old. Um, 35 years old. He's 35. He's 35 years 35 a year years older than me. Old. And uh, uh, he's not done. He's nowhere close no. to being done. He's halfway at best. You know, uh, and I would say I, I agree with it, halfway, because I tell you right now, my... Well, I, never mind. I just I can't <laughs> even control, bear it. But uh, this guy lives and breathes pool. He, you know, he's just. I think the only thing he does other than pool is uh, fish. Fishing. I know he loves his ice fishing. I wonder if he yeah. does any other type of fishing during the summer or fall season. Well, apparently he needs air conditioning during the summer because he comes to Las Vegas and stays indoors uh, where it's <laughs> air conditioned and you need a jacket. That's true. He is out here for yeah. a good month or two each summer, isn't he? Yep. As he continues his run, ball after ball. I think we'll see him using the 10 ball. Is his break shot? His break shot. Probably use the... 13 or 15 as is. Uh, it's a very cute. high probability. Don't hit it because you push it back into the stack. He's too straight, doesn't like it, but he's, he could see he's got that extension on his. And look, look, look where his hand is. He's got. An, he's got. He plays with the extension all the time, so he doesn't have to stop and do any of this. And look how softly and controlled he draws the ball. He's got a bit of a wingspan on him too. Yeah, he's, he's about six one, six two. Yeah, something like that. He's got a little bit of a height playing into his favor. Mm -hmm. And I've always agreed with players that are like over six foot, uh, playing with maybe a 60 or a 50, a 60 inch or 59 inch cube. Some players like that, a little bit longer length. Because uh, guys like myself that are vertically challenged, uh, you know, 58 or 59 inches is perfectly fine. But I have to reach for that extension quite a bit. <laughs> so we are on a 68 ball run here. I believe with an 83 to zero uh -huh. lead. I wonder if John Schmidt is what watching the U.S. Open straight. I saw somebody uh, commented on a post that I was tagged in this morning mm -hmm. in regards to this event, asking, wondering where John, Schmidt was. John was. There was a gentleman in here last night. Um, he was from, I guess, that area. Ooh. Um, and he said he tried to get John Schmidt to come down with him. And then another gentleman, Rudy something, uh, uh, Daryl Rudy or somebody out of New York area that plays extremely good straight pool. And he was trying to get him to come out here. I guess he knows them. And, uh, they, it was a no-go. They had other things to do. Hmm. Does he go into the stack? No, he got a little bit of an angle, but he could go in. Yep, he go into those two balls to open them up and then continue from there. He is going to have to get rid of the five and the three so he can open up those balls on top with the eight. He could open them up a little bit by shooting the eight now, but I don't know that he will. But um, Shane's run stopped at 82 have Mr. Thorpe at the table. He says, it's time to hear from this country. Yep. So Billy going to need to return fire here for a couple racks. Yeah, he says, I'm getting my torpedoes ready. <laughs> I've, I've taken the liberty of uh, playing with Billy, and uh, uh, yeah, I think I said something about him defeating somebody, and that said he torpedoed them. If we're going we're gonna to make... Um, little jokes out of their names. I wonder if we could do something with a torpedo and a like a Boeing 747. Boeing? <laughs> Boeing. But it's Van Boeing. Boeing. No, I know. Boeing and Boeing. No, I'm just saying if we're uh, kind of playing playing off of them a little bit. <laughs> Tie these two together. Well, you could have that little kid running around going, Shane, Shane, <laughs> for the movie. Yeah. Uh, 
Western. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, similarities between a gunfighter and a pool player. Oh, yeah. Oh, a little bit of trouble. I guess you can see the 13. Okay, never mind. I thought maybe he's going to have to go down table over a ball. Uh, Billy was on the stream yesterday, I believe. Um, he played a match. I thought I kept his scorecard so I can kind of. Yeah, he played he Max Everly. Runs. Yeah, okay. He defeated Max Everly. Yeah, as of like 125 to uh, 83 or something like that. 84. Somewhere in there? Yeah, 84. It was close. Close enough for government work. He was within, a, you know, Max uh, was respectable. Mm -hmm. He was within scratching distance. And that's the thing about, um, you know, when you get at this level, de being defeated 125 to 20 is nothing sad because, for instance, well, Shane just ran 82 balls. Oh, well, he's know. up. Yeah, he's yeah. He so, had a. So had he had 25 ball, had he had 40 balls and run the 82, and he's out. It's and he only had 20. Well, you know, there's no shame in that. And the same with uh, when they're playing rotation, they put an eight pack, a nine pack. I mean, wasn't it? Um, was it Shane that got beat? Uh, 15 to 1? Yeah, yes. he got beat by he Omar Al-Shaheen. 15 to 1 because he put a 10 back on him. Mm -hmm. uh, so where's the shame in that? What did Shane do? Put his head down, went to work, and Did came back and won the tournament. Didn't say a word and Didn't came back and double dipped the whole thing. Yep. Tyler Steyer had a great tournament there as well. Yeah, but uh, with these guys, uh, the score doesn't bother them because, hey, you were on that day. I didn't get a chance at the table. Pool's a game of control. Mm -hmm. He who is at the table has the control. Kind of like he who has the money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, here it's the table. And when you're in the chair and your opponent's running out consistently, there is nothing you can do. Of course, a lot of gamblers don't feel that way. They'll get up and start sharking. So Billy's off to a... I think he got 14 there. He got all 14 there? Yep. Okay, so he's off to a 14 ball run. Shane drops back a point. I like the pace these guys play with. They don't waste too much time. But he wouldn't have the shot to open him up. And there's your open up. I'm leaving that seven ball at all at all costs. Going forward, if I can't help it, I don't know if I mentioned. I might have to take it right here. Oh, the seven ball. I mean, you were liking yeah. that for the break shot. Yeah. Yeah, he could play the eleven and kind of leave it there. Except that uh, playing the eleven, there's not really anything really accessible. Uh, for, for the next shot, Afterward. except maybe the 12. Yeah, I was just looking at the window between the yeah. 14 and 10. Mm. And anytime you're playing position between windows, uh, I don't like it. I'm not much of a fan. You've got to have some excellent yeah. speed control. Especially when you're coming across the line. He's looking up at the one ball, I think. Yeah, so he is, he is wanting to save that seven ball for his break shot. Whichever one of the two he got straightest on, he was going to take. Yeah, I was going to say, he's trying to get on this uh, 14 ball to get it out of the way without moving the 7. And he did. But I'm not sure he's happy with it. Neither is he. Let's see, I'm anxious to see how he plays the 5 and the 15 ball. Well, here, here, here's, a guy three, that, excuse me. here's a guy that was checking it up yesterday. We were having a little fun time with him. 
where uh, he came by. He says, I don't know how to play a straight pull. I don't know anything about it. And so I kind of can't remember. Uh, I, were you with me during that match where I said that uh, Shane probably told him, just save this ball yeah, for this. Yeah. And, it, and, and he says, yep, that's about it. That was his first match against <laughs> Max. We were yeah. joking around about the advice he may have gotten from Shane before that's the right. match started. And the only reason I, I, we were checking up about that was the fact that he walks, he's been walking in with Shane almost uh, together almost every day except for today. But they knew they were going to face each other today, and he's going to shoot this combo. Position. He wants to get the cue ball off the rail. He doesn't like sitting on the rail. I don't think anybody does. Cue ball's round. You want to be able to use all parts of it, not just the top. I like running into the side rail and taking this cue ball down to the foot rail and then back up. Back up. He a lot of movement. Do that too. I, I just don't like being that close to the rail, but he's such a better player that it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Well, he's, they're, they're, their mechanics are just so consistent and so fluid. Uh, and, you know, your average player there might get a little excited about, I got to get this, I got to do that. They don't think about it, they just feel it and shoot it. Four and then coming over position in the middle of the table. These shots can be missed, but not today. And Good run from right. Billy. That's a another 14, so he's got a 28 ball run going. Is there another rack in between there? It's not the only one. That's the only one. It's only two racks for Billy? Yeah. Shane scratched two racks ago on the break shot. I thought maybe uh, there was a little rack in between. <laughs> See, he just, did you hear that? He says, Shane, was I supposed to draw it? Or, oh, am I supposed to draw this or follow it? Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, kid. <laughs> Shane's got this half smile on his face. Like, really, Billy? Follow it. If you follow it, you scratch. <laughs> That's funny. Whoa. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> What's the dipsy do on that cue ball? Yeah. I think, does this go underneath the one? It looks yes, like it, it does. does. I'm looking at it from a different angle here. Okay. I'm right along the foot rail here. Oh, gotcha. Ben's cheating. He's looking at the table. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally, I have to glance up to get and, and when he shoots this one ball, that's, we're in direct line with him. Mm -hmm. we're, in, we're on that side by about 40 feet back. Uh, we can, that's the part of the day where we can see. Our monitor, though, shows us some nice angles. Uh, like this movement here to come to this, this camera is awesome. It's great movement. There's a good movement here, so you can see the two ball that it goes right by. It was just straight, straight at the bottom. Well, we can't see that. This, these camera angles are, are, are nice when they're not just stationary. Yeah, it's nice to get a few different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Hello, three ball. I'm going to pocket you. Nice pace, nice rhythmic pace, mm -hmm. just running balls. Bumps the eight over nicely. Kind of reminds me of the old Steve Miserak commercial, even when you're just showing off. <laughs> Do you remember that commercial? Vaguely, very, vaguely. very vaguely. You're probably too young for it. I think I saw it like on a YouTube clip or something. Oh, okay. I think it was like in between tournament matches or something at an old tournament I was watching uh -huh. or an old match. So Billy doing what he what we said he needed to do. Yeah, Billy doing what he does. Blaivool. Yep. Around the world or just straight out? Around the world. He's feeling good right now. Mm -hmm. Running balls, got his opportunity. Probably feels good knowing that uh, Right now, at the moment, you've got the number one, arguably the number one player in the world, sat in his chair. Even 
though he's down on score. It's still got to feel kind of good. The problem is, can you keep the number one player uh -oh. uh, in his chair? The answer to that is maybe not. He has to break up. He can still, he can still shoot this ball. He goes back and forth um, and stays on the same line. Ends up a little bit to the right of the 10. He has a break shot. He's okay. <laughs> He's, you're okay, Billy. Let me go coach you. I'll tell you. Shane, Shane was just smiling at Billy. I still like Billy to make this. Uh, he went soft. And, oh, it went out. Uh, perfect. Either way, back and forth or just a soft shot. Total control there. That was nice. So I think we're at 42 now. Yeah. When you're running racks, 42 comes after 28. Yeah. Now see, this breaks balls open, but the cue ball kind of gets stuck behind the rack. So he's going to try to hit the, the five or the seven. Yep. That came out nice. Back into the stack he goes. not be able to see the five ball. The ten ball is a good break shot, as is the seven. A decent break shot. So had he been able to see the five, I think he would have shot it. Folks, our 2 p.m. match today, our next feature match on this table, we're going to see Warren Camco versus Gabe Owen. Another good match. And the 4 p.m. match will be either John Mora or David Zepp versus Corey Duell or Ian Costello. And since Ian, I don't think, made it in the building, it'll be Corey Duell. Our 6 p.m. match is uh, Max Eberly vers versus uh, Jerry McWhorter or Mark Vidal versus Bob Jewett. Jude and Mark are doing battle right now, or is he just practicing? But as we go, he's up to 42 balls. Can he get to 56? He's got uh, five balls to go. And we're at 49 right now. I just, I'm not even going to bother counting individual balls. I'm counting by racks. Yeah. 14 at a time. Makes our job a little easier when yeah. we can just add 14 to our running total. Yesterday I was keeping score and it, it was very distracting from, uh, from doing commentary. So we have a scorekeeper and, uh, and then the players are actually keeping score and that's actually the official score. Yeah, what the players have. What the players have was, is the official score. So, uh, and honestly, whether it's right or not. It's correct. Is, is right, if that makes sense. It's Even, their score yeah. that they turn in. What they agree on is. So, so uh, there was just no reason for me to, to chime in. Four racks in a row from Billy T. What, are we playing a uh, nine ball or a ten ball? <laughs> yeah, geez, you don't see a. Uh, uh, I run how many racks of nine ball? How many racks of straight ball? How many racks of ten ball? <laughs> they all add up. If a guy puts a six back on you playing ten ball, 60 ball run or it could you know maybe there's some combinations involved but uh, you open them up if it keeps going he's, he's got, got, a got shot the side I believe mm -hmm. Billy Thorpe Dayton Ohio 22 year old Moscone Cup player has played with Shane. Has he been on the Moscone Cup twice or just once? Three times, I believe. Three times, okay. And was he MVP one year? No, um, of the three times he's been on the team, USA's won once. We just won this last year for the mm. first time in about eight years or so. Um, and to be MVP, you have to be on the winning team. Oh, gotcha. Um, Skyler, Skyler won MVP this last year. Uh 
and that's the first year that we've won it in you know like I said eight or nine years so that would that would rule out Billy for ever have been an MVP and the reason I had that answer so quickly too is because I asked myself that same question last night too and had to figure it out well, you don't know this but the reason I asked the question is so you could give us that answer uh, worked out <laughs> you make a good team sir I had confidence <laughs> in your abilities because I, I, I didn't know for sure. I just knew that he'd been on the team. Um, yeah. Shane's been on it several, several mm -hmm. times. I mean, he, the team is built around him, really. And honestly, I don't I don't know if Shane's ever won an MVP for Moscone Cup. He uh, may have. You would think so back in, like, 2006 area. But I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Anywho, Billy's trying to make this... 70 to 82 here real quick. This is this is fun to watch when Shane put the put the heat on Billy and it didn't even face Billy. And you he know couldn't wait to get up here and handle his business. Yeah. And the good thing about it, both players, it looks like they're practicing. If you mm -hmm. watch them move around the table, they just, you know, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> Where's Muhammad Ali when you hear right. the most? Actually, you know, you can you can uh, commentate boxing, you can commentate pool, you can sit back and uh, I don't commentate boxing, but uh, I mean they trade punches when early in the game they feed each other out. So uh, sometimes in straight pool, not so much. You just get to work and run balls because what you do really doesn't affect your opponent mm -hmm. once you get to the table. In nine ball, what you do does affect your opponent by the safeties, by uh, things like the rolls you get. There's so many. Different variables for yeah. each game. Yeah, and so many intangibles in pool. Billy, I must say I'm quite yeah. impressed. You're at 70 ball run. So after being stuck 82 to zero, 83 to zero, Shane on a break shot fouled, cost him a ball, dropped him down to 82, and Billy hasn't missed in about. 15 minutes. Okay, the score is 82 to 70. Billy Thorpe is trailing uh, Shane Van Boning. Uh, they've had like about uh -oh. four innings. Yeah, there really hasn't been much yeah. of a trade, has there? Four innings. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, I, I'm, I'm guesstimating, but I don't think I'm off. Give or take one or two, it's four innings. Yeah, and this is t the 12th rack, too, so that's to only have four innings and 12 racks. Mm -hmm. My gosh, that's just. That's, you're watching some good pool. Yes. You're watching some very good pool. Guess what, guys? I think you get your money's worth today. Mm-hmm. Billy could be leading by the end of this rack. No, he would like to be. Oh, that little uh, nudge he didn't need. Now he's got, what, the four ball or the nine ball? Nine ball. Will he go for that four? That's a, yeah. that's a steep cut. He one-stroked it and hung it. Yeah, you called it. Steep cut. It was makeable. I think he probably should have taken a little more care on it. Maybe an extra so stroke or two. But Give him the balls for that rack. He got four, eight, ten, eleven. Three balls on that rack, so he's got a 73 ball run. Yeah. Shane says, my turn. I ran 82 last time I was at the table. All I need is 43. So 73, is that the biggest run we've seen? No, Shane had an 82 ball run. No. Shane oh, had, no, I'm sorry. Shane had he like a 68 82. ball run or something That's right, like that. that's correct. That's correct. That's the biggest run I've seen so far in this event. He had a 68 ball run, you're correct. So that is the, the, the highest run we've seen on the TV table. From the guy who doesn't know, claims he doesn't know how to play straight pool. <laughs> Nobody knows how to play pool. He sure knows how to pocket balls and get around yes, the table. he does. And for those of you who didn't hear it, he's, he has this break shot and he asked Shane, do I shoot it with high or low English? <laughs> I didn't hear Shane's response. Shane did not respond. <laughs> he got a little he smirk smiled. on his face and then kind of turned his head to the side. Now the 
combo. Notice how he played shape for the 15 in case the 11 dropped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a good chance that 11 mm -hmm. followed it forward. Mm -hmm. 13. Just little nuances, just little things that the players do uh, instinctively. Uh, I don't, because I don't think he, he didn't stop and think about it. He, but he, he knew it was there. Right. Yeah. He, he knew it was there, though. Yeah. And of course, I'm just. What I say doesn't mean it, that's exactly what went through his head. But I don't know. These guys, uh, a lot goes through their head uh, very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it just pops in and pops out. Because the worst thing you can do in pool sometimes is think when you're running balls. Yeah, you can get, your own, get in your own head. That's correct. And it's, it's tough to get out of your own head. When you just let the balls do it and you're just following the balls and moving with it, you know, like rolling with the punches, mm -hmm. uh, your body is trained. So there's a, a piece in the inner game of tennis that, that actually way back when I was learning to play pool, they recommended it for um, for training, mm -hmm. uh, for as a, as a head something to read that would help you with the pool game. And it's based on the fact that you train your muscles um, to do everything subconsciously. And if you don't think about what you're doing, your body does it. It just Eleven. reacts. Eleven. When you stop and think, now you tense muscles because you're trying to do something uh, like, oh, I got to put this this on this or this on that. And, oh, oh, oh. And, you, it, and it, it does. It tenses your muscles when some other thoughts get in your way. Mm -hmm. And any kind of tense muscles, well, we know what that does. Shank the shot just a little bit off. You move, uh, come up on the ball to see if you got it right. Uh oh, hello. It's two on the break. He's making two at a time. He'll go rail first for the four ball. Or the combo, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why. I was thinking that he wouldn't shoot the combo. I'm like, that's. <laughs> this is a tough shot. He might, he might be going for your shot. I don't know. Certainly the combo is on offer. I don't know about yeah. the rail first. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at him instinctively thought he, you know, he had <laughs> So I think at the moment we're 96, 73. Mm -hmm. Two balls on the break and then the combo. Just strikes the ball so pure, just whap. and the stroke is just oh, smooth like silk. He doesn't have the type of stroke that you would typically teach a new player. Uh, he's not straight back, straight forward. He's got a little bit of what I call like a three-point stroke, where he kind of pumps it, similar to what we were talking about with Scott earlier. Mm -hmm. But so. he control. Yeah, I know. So I've studied it for years. He can, it's, uh, it's part of the reason Scott plays the way he does too. Um, he's got what I call like a three point stroke or a little bit of a pump stroke. If you broke it down into slow motion, it's essentially like three different points, like two stopping points in the middle of his stroke. They're very, very fast. Um, myself and Eric Jorlofsson from Canada actually were talking about him and kind of dissecting his stroke one day. Eric said, hey, do you realize that you, you kind of look a little bit like Shane when you're hitting the ball? And I said, thank you. And he said, that's, that's not really a compliment. He said, Shane looks good when he hits the ball, but he's world class, and he, he can get away with that type of pump stroke, if you will, and he's super, super powerful if you know how to control it. Obviously, I don't hit the ball or play as well as Shane. So Eric was, he actually recorded me one day shooting a couple of shots, and then he was actually trying to correct me and get me on a smoother stroke kind of had me do a few things his way and we recorded all of it and I didn't I couldn't believe how drastic of a difference it was it didn't feel that different in my hands but watching it it was night and day difference uh, that's that's funny because he does something that just about all your high level instructors teach he has that pause and then he comes back and comes through the ball mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, in, other, in other words he basically double checks uh, his alignment and then comes through the ball. He watches cue though. It drops. It comes up and then comes 
it drops. It doesn't come straight back and straight forward. It kind of teeters. Well, I, I guess uh, it's it's super powerful and it's awesome. It's beautiful to watch, but it's typically you don't see most pros don't have that same swinging stroke that he does. It's a little more smooth or a little more uh, straight back and straight forward, I should say, rather than the up and down movement in the stroke. Well, he's going to have to keep stroking that stroke because he's going to need a rack after. Uh, he's going to get in, need to get into the rack after this one. So he needs this rack and a few balls. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's sick. Jeez. That. a little bit of trouble here? Mm, I think the two might pass if he the wants to. He's so only got the three or the 11, I think. He's got the three ball, so that means the cue ball's going to travel. I think he has the 11. Yep, 11 ball it is. Stunts forward one rail. Play the 12 in the same pocket. Just a little bit of thought, trying to figure out where he wants to land here. Just like shot. Now, nice. he's got, now he's got a nice angle on the four. Mm -hmm. Nice recovery by Shane, if you want to call it that. I would have been pleased with that position, but yeah, for someone at his level, it's... Oh, the 11? Yeah. Well, getting back to what we spoke earlier in the match, you know, how uh, average players, once they don't have that short shot like what he has right here, mm -hmm. can get a little uh, tentative on a shot like that. To Shane, it's no problem. Uh, one of the things I think I pointed out earlier, uh, and we know about Shane, is he treats every shot the same, so it doesn't really matter whether it's six feet away or three feet away. Mm -hmm. So for him, it's nothing. Uh, for you or I, playing straight pool, it might make a difference. Yeah, certainly. For me, anyway. I don't play as well as you guys. Sure. Huh. Yeah, huh. He, I know you heard what I did there. I heard what you did there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, folks, he's just building me up, Buttercup. <laughs> he must have got a line on me or something, and now he's, now he's going to needle me on the side here. Better be careful. AJ's coming back to town now. I let him take care of my light work. H oh, <laughs> AJ Jones. <laughs> yeah, uh, to be honest, the first two or three times we played, well, I beat him pretty good. And about, a, about two years ago here in this very building, uh -huh. we played a set for 1,000. And I don't want to say in my defense, but in my foolishness, it was the first day, no, it was three years ago, it was the first day I'd ever played with the Revo. Oh. And went straight into, I was confident, went straight into the box and played terrible, terribly. Played well, on a super tight table Shane here. Shane needs this one and three more. <laughs> you hear that? He pocketed two on the break and he goes, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Even Billy got a kick out of that. And so I believe I he's he one needs ball away. one ball away. That is it. 125 to 73. SVB defeats Billy Thorpe. Billy will still be in this event. Mm -hmm. And that match was completed in five, maybe six innings. Yep. One hour and three minutes. See you guys at 2 o'clock. Warren Kiamko and Gabe Owen. Thank you guys. We'll see you at 2.